The following podcast is a next level production. What did you do? Something I should have done a long time ago. This is a superhero company. Always has been. Belongs to us, not him. So I set things straight. That's all. Oh, and uh, anyone who's been hiding behind his little apron, well, that's over now, too. It's a new day, people. It's the dawn of the seven. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And I'm Rob. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about The Boys Season 3, Episodes 4, entitled Glorious 5, Your Plan, and Episode 5, entitled The Last Time to Look on This World of Lies. So we decided to double up and triple up (laughs) on the actual (laughs) podcast with people on. So, uh, st- actually, Rob, why don't you uh, talk about the synopsis of uh, The Boys Season 3, Episode 4? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, synopsis. Uh, so, tonight's streaming live exclusively for superporn.com, super, <laughs> super subscribers. I don't know where they got this from. <laughs> it's the Clash of the Dildos, or hashtag Clash of the Dildos, which, uh, which of the seven inspired dildos will crush the competitor in this tip-to-tip challenge, will it be the reigning champion Homelander Star Spangled Banger or Starlight's Electrified Star Braider? Join, <laughs> join us as we put these uh, pleasure-pounding penetrators through their paces, only on superporn.com. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I never thought I would say that. <laughs> Me neither. It's a combination of words we rarely see. <laughs> exactly. And Steve, you could uh, give us the second synopsis for episode sure five. <laughs> sure uh the last time to look on this world of lies episode five is did you know chimpanzees are an endangered species largely because of human activity but you can help by supporting construction costs for crimson countess's chimp country this beautiful refuge for chimpanzees will feature a banana plantation four daily stunt shows and a petting zoo and when you donate you'll be entered in entered to win a private video chat with crimson countess Donate today. And she <laughs> will have Benoit balls ready at the <laughs> Oh my goodness, that scene. <laughs> Wonderful Crimson Countess in the cameo by our own Seth Rogen. Yep. <laughs> All right. So All that right, out of the way, uh, we <laughs> could actually start talking. What were our initial thoughts about both these? You could start with like the uh, fourth and then go into the fifth or just combine them all. <laughs> Don't all speak at once. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I loved it. You know, I, I love both of them. You know, that the ending is uh, a four is I was so glad that I kind of called it that soldier boy was alive. And we got all the stuff that was set up in episode three that I talked about in the last podcast. We went to Russia, we got soldier boy, we got uh, Huey taking the V and, and <laughs> the whole teleportation thing where he can't keep his clothes on when he teleports <laughs> It's kind of a bad, you know, a bad side effect of that teleporting thing. But, uh, but yeah, I loved it. Four was great. And then five, you know, that segueing into five, Five with that cliffhanger with with Kimiko and uh, and then all we got and and five is just jam packed not only with with cameos but with uh, uh, just some w- wonderful story moments that I hope we'll we'll get to um, and also some controversial stuff maybe yeah yeah uh, I agree and, uh, yeah I thought um, I, I have to be honest I mean uh, the boys has possibly turned out to be some of the best writing especially for a superhero uh, show that's out there. Uh, it's not that I'm putting down uh, the MCU or anything like that, but the MCU has you know, played it safe and they have done their thing their way, which in some cases it has worked and some hasn't. I, I haven't been a big fan of some of the stuff they've had on Disney+. Plus. 
Mm. But this is just some solid, solid writing that I have seen from uh, from this show. And, you know, kudos to Amazon for uh, having the balls to put something out like this. Yeah. Very similar to like with Invincible, too, because that there's it's not as extreme. It is a cartoon, but <laughs> I'm just loving what they put out. And especially the gruesomeness. Now, the effects that go on is one thing, but the crazy, zany, sexual, exploitive things that we get out of this show just reminds me of Preacher when you and I covered that, Steve, mm-hmm. a while ago. And... But this is on a next level. <laughs> yeah, not to put a pun into it of where the network is. But, uh, yeah, I I do agree with you, Rob. It, it's some of the craziest of writing, but it's very, it, it's very well thought out with every episode and what they give us. Because it leads into the next thought. And we do get answers, ans- well, questions answered by the next episode in comparison to... You know, just leaving you hanging, and then it, you know some shows will be like, "Oh, well, we're going to do this at the very end of the season." Here's all your answers, mm-hmm. but now we get these resolved by the next episode at least, and then something else happens that we have to question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I do enjoy it. Yeah the uh, the two episodes, you know, we saw a little bit more of uh, with Butcher and his. Uh, Making the deal with Nina, going out to Russia, uh, Frenchie not being so sympathetic, but, you know, concerned because of his association with Nina. And then his uh, his typical, you know, protectiveness over Kimiko. And we do see that later on when she's sent in in episode five going into, uh, I <laughs> guess you could call it the Russian king or mobster that they get they get this information and she gets stuck with all the uh, hookers that are there and results in that lovely mm-hmm. fight that was an awesome scene <laughs> that is that and that's that's in four that that's in four that because that's four. okay that's, that's what that's what they owed nina to get and i've got I, I was a little confused about a couple of things in in this if we try to separate the episodes i'm not sure if we can um not really but, but, <laughs> they're gonna blend. but in episode four there was a i was a little confused and i got even more confused in episode five, but in four, it seemed a little convenient that the CIA is able, it gives Billy the money to pay back Nina for, you know, Cherie's uh, heroin theft and also pay her a little extra to get them into, into Russia. But then they have to do this job in order to get the information of where the lab is. And, uh, and then in episode five, they just very easily get out, apparently, of of Russia. And, yeah, that, but Nina's that your question. But Nina's pissed at Frenchie because of how many of what happened at the lab. Well, didn't she give them? Didn't they get the information about the lab from? I, that's where I was confused. Was she definitely did give them the information? I guess it was uh, understood that they wouldn't harm anybody or kill anybody at that <laughs> I point. Yes, but. Uh, yeah, but obviously, how are they going to get in there and not really kill anybody? Yeah. You got you got a soup. You got somebody who is a 24-hour soup and the other one who steals some drugs <laughs> to be a 24-hour soup as well. And they're actually trying to get in to get a weapon to destroy a soup, but which we find out is the soup himself that they had actually stole way back when. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, you know... That Obviously. was actually pretty cool because I thought that, you know, everybody thinks, okay, you know what, um, there's a weapon out there for uh, Homelander, you know, that they could, def- you know, they- so they could defeat Homelander. But then yeah. you kind of see that it's not that it actually was that they took, um, what uh, the, what's boy. the name? Yeah. Soldier Boy. Right. <laughs> I'm st- I still uh, laugh at that name. <laughs> but yeah, so they took Soldier Boy and they just experimenting on him and, you know, and... Uh, Basically, they just can't kill him, but they are experimenting on him in every possible way. So I'm very curious how they how Soldier Boy is going to become this weapon for Homelander you know, think, or, you know, against yeah. Homelander. Yeah. yeah, I think we got a hint of that because of his uh, damage to Kimiko and how her wound does not heal, which we see in episode five. 
Right. Right. And that's why we get that whole elated uh, musical scene that we get from her because it's her fantasy and her feeling more human. (laughs) And she talks about it, too, of how she didn't want those uh, powers just like with Homelander's kid. And he he even said it. I don't want these. Mm -hmm. And she says the same, like, in signing or writing down. And, you know... She can feel that way. But the thing is, is that I think that Soldier Boy is going to be the weapon that they need. Because what a better way to uh, stop Homeland there if, like, take away his powers? What is he without right. his powers? Some sociopathic crazy person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here's a question for you guys, because I have never read the actual comic. So, and I don't know if you guys have, but... Nah. My my thought is, what if Soldier Boy all of a sudden teams up with Homelander? <laughs> you know, so that yeah. would be a big clusterfuck there for uh, the boys. Yeah, oh, big big time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see when these two actually clash because they're so similar in their kind of outlook and just kind of the way they are and their powers and everything. And mm-hmm. you know, it was it was when I did my second watch today. I really picked up on the parallels between the conversation that Homelander has with Maeve, and this is in episode five, but uh, yeah. that Homelander has with Maeve and that Soldier Boy has with Crimson Countess about where Maeve, you know, Maeve is telling Homelander that she pities him and all this and that she never loved him. And Crimson Countess basically says the same thing to Soldier Boy is that I never loved you. You were always a misogynistic pig, basically. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I wanted the, you know, she worked with the Russians to get him kidnapped. You know, because that that was a that was a whole left turn right there in episode five when Billy tells her that Soldier Boy is back, and she's like, "How did he escape?" And so suddenly, Billy realizes that, "Oh, you were in on it, kidnapping him." Hmm. Right. Yep. And they knew, and he just let <laughs> Butcher goes here. Go ahead, mm-hmm. see, talk to your girlfriend. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. I want before we move too far into five. I, I want us to to talk about a little bit about this plan that they have in four that ends up going completely awry because A Train is such an idiot. Um, uh, you know, it's it's Alex kind of confides in him. Supersonic confides in A Train of what they're going to do, and that ends up getting Alex killed at the at the end of the episode when we see when Homelander flies Starlight up there to the roof and. It's just one of those moments where you realize everything is just falling apart. And so they're going to have to regroup and figure out where, where to go Mm. from, uh, you know, from here. And that's really what pushes them into this team up with soldier boy in, in episode five is the fact that they lose basically all their suit backup that they were going to get. And that's why butcher wanted to use the uh, V 24 That's why Huey is tempted because he sees the high in it. So he's mm-hmm. addicted to V24 now. Well, he saw train spotting. So he knows he, he knows the deal. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's I, I think it's just Huey's way of, you know, because Huey was always the uh, what I would say, the, um, the low end, you know, the low end of the, of the, pot- of the totem pole mm-hmm. yeah. and seen as the weakling. And so now he feels so empowered that he de- he's definitely getting off on it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if. Uh, Butcher actually gets addicted to that. You know, if all of a sudden he really wants to continue mm-hmm. with I that type of power. I don't think so, because that one scene with Maeve and him and they're talking and how he hates soups and she goes, oh, you love the power. He goes, no. She goes, you must have felt great killing gunpowder the way you did. And he said, no. And he just, like, started, like, showing his detest of soups. And then, obviously, they get, you know, he gets some nookie from me. <laughs> which I think uh, would be a funny twist of fate if, you know, his wife or his ex-wife or dead wife at this point had a kid with Homelander. What if Maeve gives birth to Butcher's kid? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that one. Nobody was whipping out a super duper <laughs> rubber at that point. And I don't think uh, Butcher at that point was even on V24. 
He I, might have had residual stuff in his system, but I think I he at least had to have some residual because she was throwing him around like, yeah. like, a, like a rag doll. And so I think he either was. I think he's. I. This is where I, I I'll disagree with you a little bit. I think he might get uh, a little addicted to it and yeah. and the coming down from it because I think he's kept taking it. And and we're going to find out maybe later because, you know, Huey, we keep seeing the reaction the next day, but we didn't see that from Butcher this time. So I don't know if he's kept he's kept taking it. Um, So we'll have to I guess we'll have to see. But yeah, I have a feeling that something's got I mean, when the first time he took it, I mean, you definitely saw that he has some kind of residual uh, side effects. Hmm. And this time it, it seems like he's not. And it seems like his body's getting used to it. So I'm just wondering if. Once it can, he stop, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so and if he can't, then he's going to have to rely on it all the time. So that that would be very interesting. I, I, like I said, I never I never read. I don't know how close to the comic book this um they're keeping this show, but uh, I'll be very interested in knowing what, you know, what that outcome of him, you know, dealing with, you know, V24 and then just. And also Huey, because I know Huey seems like the type that he will get carried away with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He definitely is. He had that look on his face. He had that smile. And he was so eager in front of uh, Crimson Countess's uh, trailer <laughs> at the trailer park right. when he wanted to take it right away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like itching. I was like, just give, oh, it, to yeah, me. give it to me, you know? Yeah. And. I, I yeah, definitely see Huey being addicted to it. And yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's that the fact that he was, you know, like I said, he was known as the uh, as the weakling of the group, but it's also the fact that his girlfriend is is, is one of the superheroes. Yeah, and I'm sure he feels very emasculated mm-hmm. because of all that. So by him having this uh this uh V, I mean, he's just I I. I'll be very interested to see how much of um of a mess that's going to be for him. Oh, it's already yeah. a mess because she knows. And when he actually tells her, he sits her down. He gets all her favorite candies, gets her her White Claw. And then as he tells her, she freaks out. He goes, but, you know, I told you the truth <laughs> straight off. Right. You know, because, <laughs> of course, it had come around because he didn't have his cast on. Mm-hmm. And she goes, wait, you you don't have your cast on, you know? Exactly. Uh, I just love how the fact, you know, it's like before that, at one point, Homelander was giving him the whole, you know, he just walks in on them before he goes on that, that field trip with Butcher, before he started taking the V, mm-hmm. he, uh, he, Homelander writes uh, his whole name on his cast. Yeah. And then starts, like, questioning, right in, like, to star uh starlight uh, annie and says it's like asking about how he is sexually and this and that. it's like and then she's like standing up for him and you could see within his face he wants to run he oh, yeah. wants to get away but he was trying to he was trying to like stand up to him as well if you looked he kind of stood fast and was ready to do something mm-hmm. but he knew he'd be dead in a heartbeat if homelander <laughs> did something <laughs> Which we already know he already did something because later on we get it by episode five, I think, where, uh, yeah, Supersonic eats yeah. it. Yeah, no, it's the end of the very end of episode four is where yep. we see we see Supersonic's dead body because he, he shows it to Annie mm-hmm. and basically he knew what was going on that people are against him. Mave, her, uh, I think he had a hint of it from A Train or or even from Deep at a certain point because they know but let, let's talk about deep in a train too because we get that wonderful fight in the hallway <laughs> and this yeah. rap and <laughs> and there we get this fight and it's them throwing out certain things about each other towards homelander and what they have on each other mm-hmm. and then of course you know the deep is homelander's little boyfriend <laughs> They're like well come on oh i'll stick up for you and uh it 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 just you know and and the way Homelander is in general, especially what he did with Supersonic in the very beginning about the the, the tacos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really, you are a piece of crap. Mm-hmm. Everybody, yeah, it's very much almost like what he did with the Deep too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Um, and that last episode on episode three. Yeah, but, yeah, it's also. I mean, like when you see that uh, Homeland, what Homelander just knows that um, 
that a train i mean especially in one of the other uh episodes where he tells them that he's gaining weight and stuff like that so this is there's just this thing where he just if he could just you know melt them with his eyes he will he would <laughs> um i i don't know i like when i see I, it seems like everybody's just trying to get on his good side and i mean let me tell you man let's just give it up for uh I would say, uh, what is it, Anthony, Anthony Starr? Star. Oh yeah, my God, man! He, he <laughs> the, the way he goes from being a psychopath to being at some at some points likable too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you hate him, you know there are times that you kind of like him and go, he's kind of charming sometimes. What yeah. you know? But he just he goes back and forth, back and forth, and you know with that um with this character which makes it very interesting but yeah, yeah no it, yeah it's a very, i'm kind of interested in the deep though the deep is uh it keeps getting manipulated by his uh wife his mm-hmm. wife She's always feeding him his lines yeah yes. no yeah. matter <laughs> what especially when they're downsizing vaught itself yeah the, the they criminal eliminate analysis, yeah the, yeah and that that whole meeting when they started talking about certain things and then the homelander is approached by the the one woman that that's on the board and basically he felt like an idiot because he didn't know exactly what she was talking about and it was based upon analytics within about the seven and how it would be for the public right how it right. affects share prices and exactly and credit and credit ratings and those kind of things and yeah it's it's homelander is definitely in over his head in this whichever i guess he's taken over kind of the president role because ashley is the ceo and so i'm not sure what exactly his position is but you know it, it's it really as we were talking about just now it's really um I, I think of like George Clooney in the Oceans movies. It's a very Danny Ocean kind of charming way of mm. of, of killing everybody else's plans or, or figuring out everybody else's plans and then twisting it. Just like with Victoria Newman, where, you know, Stan Edgar thought she was going to out Homelander, but it ended up he turned the tables on him on on him. It just seems like he's always a, this this season is all about Homelander kind of turning the tables on everybody and and putting himself in a good position again whereas in the last season we kept seeing him being put down and put down and so mm-hmm. I, I it's gonna be interesting to see how the season ends where homelander's at if he's at a high or at a low at the end of the season right and and what's interesting about all that is just how you know you always have you know of course he he gets um newman uh not newman edgar gets uh you know, steps down, but when Homeland that goes into like the, uh, what is it? The uh, board meeting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, like Edgar tells, I remember Edgar telling, you know, Homeland there, well, we'll see how you do in this position, basically, mm-hmm. you know, cause everybody sees him as, you know, just this spoiled, powerful, spoiled, you know, but you know, so Homeland thinks that, you know, no, oh, you know, I can handle this very easy. And all of a sudden he's in the board meeting. You can see that he, it is, he's mm-hmm. so, uh, underqualified for that position. <laughs> and he just, you know, you can see that he's about to like, just lose it, but yeah. everybody's trying to kind of please him, And, you know, and, but all these questions coming around, he, you know, he, he felt like they were putting a, you know, a, a foot on him, uh, you know, especially in the last season. But in this case, you know, now that he's empowered, you know, to, uh, you know, be in charge, all of a sudden now uh, when he's in that board meeting, you could still see that he feels that way anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was really cool. You know, I was like, oh, OK. He still doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, no not at <laughs> not all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we talked a little bit about it already, but that that fight scene in the Russian mobsters mansion where Kamiko's using the dildos. And just is just bloody and crazy and awesome. And that Russian cover of I Will Survive is playing, yep. you know, was just great. And then she gets shot by that, uh, by the, that, uh, the, in the head, in the head. Yeah. <laughs> and we see like that's, the Wolverine thing where the bullet comes yeah. out, uh, yep. was just great. And, and that's still dope fight I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 Not um, that I've seen many, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I just love what this show does, and I, I it, there was a lot of cuts in it, so it wasn't one of those one of those uh, what do they call that you know continuous 
fight scenes, but it was just really good. The way it was edited and the way that yeah. the stunts did it and everything was just was just amazing. I thought it was a really, really cool fight scene. And then the same thing at the end of the episode when they're in the the, the lab and Billy reveals that he's got powers. You know, he steps out and he starts getting shot and Marvin's just watching him and then he uses the laser eyes and and then Huey revealing that he's got powers and he punches that guy through the chest and saves uh, saves uh, Marvin's life M-M? was yeah M.M. thank you saves Marvin's life I thought it was great yeah I, I it's funny we talk about that fight scene in the where the prostitutes were uh, what were the names I had them written down but the, we already mentioned it in the synopsis but there was other ones yeah, there too there was the deep the one for the deep and there was one for black noir and, and yep, yep. They, they I all... had them all written down I, I can't find them in my notes but oh, it's no. funny <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I wrote them all down because I got that is hilarious I gotta talk about that because it's the, the fact that somebody actually came up with those and made them for the show yeah <laughs> I can you imagine so- the writer's room <laughs> Uh, Imagine can, the writers room is like, all right, I came up with three names. Can somebody else come up with the with the rest? And that was just probably like an hour of. I could just imagine the stuff they left on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just loved it. They uh, also with Ashley too because she had one of her own, but it was a strap on when she had her little conversation <laughs> yeah. with one of the employees. <laughs> And he was just complying, and then she realized, "Oh, I could be a domineering person here." Uh, and I'm like, the, <laughs> the 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 glint and gleam out of Colby Minifee's face when she put stated all that. I just was like, "Oh my god!" And Steve, the first thing I thought was Jerry's going to be like, "Wow, <laughs> I love her." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our friend Jerry, our friend Jerry loves <laughs> Colby Minifee. <laughs> very very cool. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and to talk about, uh, well, we talked about A-Train. A-Train's little uh, advertisement within that. You're thinking that he's just walking out of the Vought building, and he and then he's, oh, hold on. And as soon as I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to be commercial and at, at some sort of advertisement for, yep, it's his pal- energy drink. And it's, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I'm like, all right, I'll be, you know. uh, I'll, be I'll tell you, I, I actually got psyched out for it because uh, at first I thought it was something within the actual show itself. Because he goes, hold on, for the filming, uh, you know, like I guess they we're trying to film or something, and then he said, hold on, something important's going on. Yeah, but then yeah. I saw what they were doing, and I was like, oh, this is one of his commercials. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that whole peace rally thing, and, and yeah, the the. The sub the subplot with A Train going into uh, episode five is another one that we're gonna watch play out through the rest of the season. I'm sure because I what, think so. what happened with his brother and Blue Hawk, and uh, I don't yeah. know, you know, how is he gonna respond to Blue Hawk? Because we heard Blue Hawk talking to the newscasters and straight up lied about somebody having a gun in the community center. He said, "Oh, this person pulled their gun, and that's why I reacted the way I did." But he maimed and killed. Like a it, bunch of people. Uh, yeah, two or three, four people in that community center, and Vought's just going to cover it up. It's just it's just disgusting. Yeah, after they donated, what, <laughs> some yeah. money to it, and it's like, uh, and then he's trying to defend it, mm-hmm. Blue Hawk, at, at the end. Somebody's right. going to wind up taking him out. It's either A-Train's going to run into him and leave a big splat when he's not looking, or they're going to wind up bringing him in into Vought directly, which would be, whoa, don't do that. And then you're in, uh, you're just inciting more racism at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, this show has so – this show crosses the line in so many, in so many ways that, yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they, uh, they bought him in. Hmm. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Marvin for a minute here. Mother's milk. I loved how in episode four we we get the 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 kind of uh, it's a telling in a way by Billy of why he and Mallory brought Marvin into the boys because of his his uh, relationship with his men and his unit and how he would be with the boys. He would be the one. To, it very it made my NCO heart like like swell a little bit thinking of Marvin because that's the, that's the role that that we were. Sp- 
we were supposed to have or the sergeants were supposed to have is is of, of building people up and, and bringing them in and then to see the crash in episode five when he realizes that soldier boy is alive and soldier boy is out again and we're watching him and even his reaction to those videos of what they were doing to soldier boy you could tell that even for him it wasn't enough because we get that flashback that he was there when soldier boy killed his family and he's covered they show him covered in blood as a child and i was just my heart broke for him and i uh, and just can't wait to see again how this is going to play out uh, the rest of the season with marvin cuz what is what is he going to do he doesn't want to take the the v but he wants to end these soups because I've got the quote uh, from episode five down in my notes where he says, I'm going to, I'm going to say it now because I thought it's the whole point, butcher, the whole GD point of what we do is that no one should have this kind of power. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, it was great, but I'm, it's, there's going to be a conflict with his character in, in trying to figure out how do we fight this soup if we don't have powers. Yeah, and it makes sense from Butcher's point of view because they need that that kind of strength. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he realized once he saw Soldier Boy. And especially what he did, you know, Soldier Boy did to Kimiko, plus what uh Soldier Boy did in in the city when they got to meet uh Paul Reiser who mm -hmm. played uh, Soldier Boy's what was it? His he was, publicist. They call, they call, no, he was a public. He was a bot publicist in the eighties. Yes, he was. He was the publicist for all the heroes in the eighties. Uh, I loved. I didn't even recognize Paul Reiser. I'm going to admit. I had to do. I had to do the Amazon video thing. Go. Who is that? Go. That's Paul Reiser. Um, but it was just. It was just his character was so over the top. And and talking about all of his old stories and things, and then showing them his leg, you know, and being like, "Oh my I, god!" I don't some of, some of the great quotes that he came out with um, were just insane. I mean, he was just <laughs> such a entertaining character, um, and you never thought you would see Paul Reiser. I mean, besides you know the movie Aliens, where he you know he played an asshole, but, mm -hmm. yeah. But other other than that, he always plays the nice guy. But on this, he was just. Uh, it was the raunchiest yeah. person there, yeah. and then it was just like his stories. Like you could tell this it, that felt to me more like uh, if you guys remember the uh, Studio uh, Fifty Four uh, stories that you would hear um, back then. So it just seems like he is part of that era, mm -hmm. you know, and all the uh, debauchery that happened in that time, you know. So <laughs> so he's uh, that that character. I liked him a lot, and I want to. I hope I see it. I get to see more of him. Yeah, I uh, he just his stories alone too with all the people. He said something goes so that would be gay, right? Nowadays, <laughs> ah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking about it, what was he? He said he said Mar uh, Marlon Brando was balls deep in him, and he was balls deep in somebody else. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. what, I think he was talking about Kelly. He was talking about Kelly LeBron, and I was and I was laughing because I was like, "Yeah, well, Kelly LeBron, was a great looking woman back, back then." Back in the mm -hmm. den, yeah, Shannon yeah. Tweed, yeah, right? All the people that he's yeah, all the eighties. Two words, <laughs> two words, Shannon <laughs> Tweed. Right. <laughs> Google it. I just thought it was great uh, because he knows Huey's too young to know all this mm -hmm. stuff at this point. Right, which makes me laugh too because if you think Jack Wade is very young. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, just to let all our listeners know, yes, uh, those dildos were definitely made. Uh, yes, Star, St Star Spangled Banger and the Deep's Flower Pounder and Black Noir Silent Screamer, they are not available on Amazon <laughs> to purchase. <laughs> so do not look. <laughs> Some Etsy page is going gonna, is gonna to figure it out. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty Although sure. You never know. They might be. Be on BestBuy.com. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. If, if, nobody, if nobody knows, Best Buy all of a sudden started selling sex toys too, So, which oh, is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> that um, is crazy. I want to talk about the one, for me, the, and I didn't, I, I kind of had a hint of it in the first time I watched it, but definitely the second time I watched it, I picked up on it. There's a huge hole for me in this story that really bothered me, particularly the second time I watched it. And that's, we have, so we have soldier boy almost naked coming out of this, this tube 
and, and mm-hmm. running away and Billy uh, saying, okay, he's, he's the Kremlin's problem now. But then mm-hmm. the very next yeah. scene, we see he's him in, in New York. He's in, he, well, no, we see him get out of a plane. We see him oh, in a track suit with a, 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 a suitcase or something over his shoulder that he had, he had crawled into a car, some sort of cargo, Russian cargo plane and was able to sneak into the United <laughs> States. And for me, I'm like, what, what, why not show us that? Show us how he figured that out because, you know, he looked very deranged until he was able to go to Paul Reiser's character and shave and get his suit and stuff. But right. it, just that, for me, that was a big hole of going from he's he's the Kremlin's problem to suddenly yeah. he's got clothes, he's got luggage, <laughs> and he's jumping out of a cargo plane in, in the middle of New York. You know, I'm Maybe like, we'll get that question answered next episode yeah. Who knows? yeah exactly but then again from what i'm told and read it's going to be the most craziest and zaniest episode that we've ever seen and they say if you're easily offended don't watch it oh, well <laughs> what number six yes oh wow, wow. okay all right uh, that's tomorrow, tomorrow morning I can't yeah, wait. tomorrow morning tonight <laughs> hero gasm it's entitled <laughs> <laughs> uh, well listen i mean when you start when you start the uh season with uh oh yeah a, with termite uh, <laughs> going into somebody's phallus yeah <laughs> yeah yep and then just blowing him up it's one of those things where you go well shit how much crazier can it get and uh the um i was uh i was hearing a uh an interview with um with a guy who played mother's milk and they asked him they said hey how much crazier will it get and all he said was, "It it from one to ten, this is a twenty as it keeps going." Wow! <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so yeah, well, considering last season, the biggest thing that we saw in the teaser was the the whale blowing up and all of them inside it, and you know because the deep was trying to like show his bravado about it, but you know. But now it gets worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the what is it, Paul Reiser? Uh, I guess it, his they used to call him the Legend. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you guys actually uh, said that or not. I'm, I'm like looking at it here, and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah, and I couldn't figure out because at first he said the Legend, and then and then Marvin just kept saying Legend because just calling him Legend instead of the Legend. So I don't know if there was a right. a, a specificity there or not, but. Yeah. Just to mix in a few things that I like to, uh, there's a couple of quotes that I liked, uh, especially with Huey asking, where did you get the V to Butcher? And the f- one thing that Butcher says is, you know, one of those websites, boners for days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I had one uh, when, when Billy tells Kimiko she's got to go do the killing uh, for Nina. He says, sorry, love, victim of your own success. <laughs> yeah, Homelander had a cool one, but it was kind of foreshadowing because Ashley winds up using it later with her employee, which I thought was funny. And he says, is your idiot brain being fucked by stupid? It's not <laughs> rhetorical. <laughs> and then we find her doing that later on. Right. You know, and that was, you know, the reason why he did that was it was because uh, Ashley didn't find out about Victoria Newman's press conference about mm-hmm. Edgar, and then she, and it wasn't really about Edgar, it was supposed to be about Homelander, and that's when we get the double cross, and then obviously, by the end of the episode, we know that Homelander had something on, of all things, Victoria Newman, who had her own child, who suffers from, I don't know if she's a soup, or she just has a rare disease, and on top of that, Homelander knows, that he goes, oh, well, yeah, I could see it in your eyes. You want to blow up my brain right now. Mm-hmm. So he knows of her powers. So Homelander is that psychotic that he's actually utilizing his powers to influence others because he feels like he's untouchable. Right. And that's the reason why I think Soldier Boy is going to be this thing that actually not destroy Homelander, but humanizes him or makes him human. Hmm. And it'll be interesting if we get to that point where what if they get a twist of fate in this where Soldier Boy is being used by Butcher. He takes out Homelander. Homelander is turned human and Soldier Boy takes over mm-hmm. the seven. 
You know, there, we don't know. These are questions right. that are come up. I'm just speculating in a sense because of how strong Soldier Boy is. Yeah. And right. he can't fly, as we know. He could only, he has super strength. He's got the laser eyes. He could. Oh, I didn't he, realize how powerful his character was until they started mentioning him so much in the end. You know, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And. I didn't realize that he was, you know, at that level. Yeah, he was yeah. on par. He was definitely on par with Homelander. And now he's surpassed he, almost to a point where he's surpassed Homelander because whatever that, expo- that that nuclear explosion that he's able to do, because remember, Book, uh, Butcher had the Geiger counter and that's yep. that they're like they're like getting the radiation going. So he's, you know, what, what did what Butcher say? Somebody said Chernobyl shoved up his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, his rear yeah. end. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 again, it's going to be interesting to see because he seemed to, and this is again, I, I hate to quibble about these little things because they're not not that big a deal. <laughs> but he seemed to transition very quickly into this this world. You know, yeah. if he's been held by the Russians for this long, we don't know how much exposure he's had to the outside world. It really seemed like he didn't when he was walking around New York. It seemed like he had no exposure because you know then he just hears the Russian music and it sets him off. Yeah, and then the it's next kind of like a PTSD. Mm-hmm. And then the right. next thing we see, he's he's in his uniform. He's he's using his powers, and I'm just like, okay, we this is a jump we made here. That yeah, we didn't get any answers. It's not a Steve Rogers thing where he had to learn to adapt over time. He just like mm-hmm. follows through. You know, right. I'm wondering if anybody showed him how to use Uber or, or <laughs> Lyft to get where to the Legends House. <laughs> the one thing about Soldier Boy too, in the very beginning of that particular episode, of all things, you do get the whole uh, time frame of where Soldier Boy was originally from because it's in the 70s, late 70s or mid 70s to late uh, late 70s into the 80s because he's on solid gold singing Blondie's uh, Rapture. You're right. So I guess he's only been held by the Russians for about 40 years. Not 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 as long as not. That's still it's, a long time. It's still a long time. To, and a lot, and, and things, the world has progressed a lot since I think they said 1984 was 83 or 84 was when he died. And I'm putting air quotes. It disappeared. Yeah, or disappeared, how we want yeah. to put it. Yeah. Uh, so so you're right. So it's, it's still, but the world has changed a lot since oh, yeah. then. Well, it changed in within the past 20 years in technology for all of us at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. So for him, this is exponential. Right. Exponentially a uh, change for him. But the world still hasn't changed based upon people in general and how they communicate and talk. Unless he walks up to somebody and they have a cell phone to their face and he doesn't know what it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, other, other than that, getting around transportation still hasn't changed. Airplanes, cars. Well, it's the way it's the way transportation, cars, and all that. I mean, it, they're still there. It's just <laughs> it's different in the sense of you know, like oh, you know, uh, cars are now I don't know better performance, better, a lot more comfortable. There's a lot more technology in it. So I think that those little things is what he'll probably be going like oh. Okay, this is different. Like yeah. he just like everything else that he says, you know, like or everything he sees. Mm-hmm. The world <laughs> is the same except these slight different things. They're just like, oh, wait a minute, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that Rob changed his Zoom name. <laughs> I, just, I lost it in the middle of your speech. <laughs> uh, the Star Spangled Banger. There you go. <laughs> uh. I did that in the beginning. Did you? I, <laughs> I, you just saw it saw it. I just I just noticed it now. I don't know. We're like, well, however long we're in. I just noticed it now. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, the only other uh, quote, I, I kind of had a quote, um, the one from Billy where he says, uh, with great power comes the absolute certainty that you'll become a right. And then he uses the C word. Yep. <laughs> yep. That is true. And actually, a lot of people got offended because, you know, they, they were taking that from Spider-Man kind of that feel. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, just grow yeah, up. Get and, over it, yeah. folks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Oh, there is also stuff on the internet regarding the boys too that I just I looked and I just shrugged and I'm like really because you, you got a lot of the people who are uh, into Trump and all that or right wings and they're like they're upset about the show and how Anthony Starr is 
and they're trying to equate it to Trump, and I'm and then they're upset. No. I'm like, really? It's a show. I can get over it. They can get over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a show, though. Yeah, exactly. Come on, it's exactly. a story. Don't don't put your political beliefs into this show. Exactly, exactly. Just so, like we talked about with that that parody of the NRA convention a, a couple yeah. of episodes ago. You know, yeah, right? I, yeah. To me, I. I found it humorous, but you and I are both advocates of the NRA. Yeah, and, and I thought it was hilarious. Everything. I thought it was hilarious too. I wasn't offended by it. I was just like, yeah, there's actually some. I mean, not exactly. It's it's more safe than what that show. Yeah, what they yeah, showed. They made it ludicrous. <laughs> like, is it, what it they did. Ludicrous, but I'm okay with that. You know, hey, make fun yeah. of people. Let take. Don't take yourself so seriously. Come on, <laughs> lighten up. Uh, this, yeah. I have a couple from Butcher that I like, the quotes from episode five. Uh, one of them, it's like when Butcher sees Huey vomiting after the V24, and he goes, looks like Kermit the Frog had r- a right wank in your mouth. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh. I will say that this uh, this show has some great quotes. I mean, just the like I said, the dialogue is just amazing. The writing, made, but like the stuff that Butcher comes out with, just incredible. Oh, especially what he says to Mother's Milk when uh, MM is telling him, you know, how stated no one should have those powers after finding, you know, that Billy, uh, Billy and Huey had taken them. And he goes, and Butcher just goes, "Well, ain't that just fucking fairies and dancing dildos?" I <laughs> <laughs> well, what does he what does he say to Maeve? He says something about y'all are, are walking nuclear erections. You know, yep. we got to get rid of all of you. So I, I we kind of talked about the addiction side of this, but I think what we're going to see if we get to see an addiction kind of storyline between the two of them, Huey and um, and Butcher. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Butcher is going to be the the addict who hates himself for being an addict. Correct, but he still craves the drug, and Huey's going to be the addict who who wants it, who's who's, who's more and had, more, yeah, wants it more and more. So I, it'll be interesting to see Carl Urban and and Jack Quaid play this part. It, like I said, if they take it down in a, kind of an addiction kind of road for them, because I, I could definitely see. I, I, I don't mean I'm, I'm kind of going back on what I said earlier, but I don't really disagree with what you're saying about that Billy hates himself. But I think that's exactly it. I think Billy hates himself for taking I think the, so. taking the V. And and so I, I I I can totally see him being that kind of addict who hates himself but can't get away from the drug. Yeah, right. He won't it, be able to stop, but yet he'll like he'll just you know look when he looks at himself in the mirror, he just won't be able to stand who he sees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's just use in his opinion in his mindset he's just using it to get rid of to even the odds with the soups that they're trying to go after. So that way they're not ones getting hurt because he already seen what happened with the devastation from last season. Because, mm-hmm. you know, his wife died yeah. due to circumstances and all that. <laughs> uh, we haven't really talked a little bit about uh, what really happened to Maeve. Where do we think she is? Obviously, she's not at a rehab center. Uh, nope. it, it looked like Black Noir or somebody like that kind of grabbed her after Homelander like kind of looked over her shoulder. Um, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see her again, or is she done? I think we're going to see her again, but I think Homelander is probably going to have her at a certain point. Mm-hmm. She, she, He might take her hostage because he knows, and she definitely hates him. Already pointed that out with her little speech towards him. Mm-hmm. Right. And, he, and Homelander already knows that she... Starlight and you know a few others that he's gonna you know obviously you know a train and the deep but he's manipulating them he could easily put her aside and then just have him show up Starlight show up because Starlight's just gonna pose the public media as them together just to playing along because she doesn't want Huey dead either mm-hmm. so she he might just pull her away and then Noir and everybody else could do whatever they need to. I wouldn't be surprised if we see limbs missing <laughs> on her and being held against her will. And then eventually they they use a media mogul to say, well, she died on this mission. How? Right. Some villain that we don't know of. And they could always say, Butcher did it. Because <laughs> they'll publicize Butcher being the one coming after them. Mm. Yeah, it could be that or, you know, Soldier Boy that, they, you know, they'll blame on it. You yeah. know, something. Yeah, something like that. 
And I have a feeling that that's exactly what they'll, they'll probably do is they'll look for an excuse to use Soldier Boy again, you know, uh, as an excuse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I just loved in uh, one scene in episode five with Ashley, with her assistant, Ashley. And she, her assistant is ending her sentences. Yeah. For her. <laughs> the, the character has got like a mini me with her at this point. <laughs> Uh, I just love the uh, <clears throat> the the Seth Rogen cameo. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, that Crimson Countess as a, a that was so girl. surprising. <laughs> as a web, ca- she's a cam girl, and I'm like, and the fact this is when Soldier Boy walked in, she goes, "Oh, you look so young," and he goes, "You don't." <laughs> 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 and then she was just like offended. I'm, I'm like, wonder if Lori Holden really did take offense. <laughs> nah, they, uh, uh, well, I don't think they did, but you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be interesting, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. No, but that that was a good scene. Like I said, I and it was funny how Seth Rogen just got so into the uh, into the role that he was doing. I was like, well, yeah, stop. that's him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was zapped or whatever in the chair, and he goes, "What's happening? What's happening?" <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> and, and that was it. Oh, you got his money's worth. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Last time he'll see that, though. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be very curious to see because you know w- when you have like people like that, like Seth Rogen, just appear for like a few seconds or something like that. I'll be very curious to see how, like you know, I, this. Of course, this season is getting great reviews, but <laughs> if it goes into a fourth and fifth season. How many cameos are we going to see from other celebrities just because they want to be in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeffrey D. Morgan actually made a comment last year when they were filming because he would have loved to join in all the fun but he's already contracted out for amc at this point he's filming more towards closer to home right now (laughs) so they start filming in like two two or three weeks now in the city and up in uh newburgh area where the studios are so he's closer to home so he's not going to want to fly yeah to atlanta (laughs) anymore (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like I said, he'll probably do a cameo or something. It, it is going to be interesting because. to see who who shows up as as cameos because we know what was. I was just rewatching something else that the last season of it had a bunch of of celebrity cameos. It just like came out of the woodwork out of nowhere. You know, it just had to be because they were fans of the show. And it's escaping me what I I've rewatched a few things here recently. Oh man, uh, uh, yeah, you just triggered something in me that I remember something like that too. <laughs> it was. It, it'll kill me not to remember what show it was, but it was. I just remember seeing cameo after cameo, and I'm going, "Man, this is a lot of like." It looked like every episode had one or two, and you're like, "Where are these guys just showing up out of the out of nowhere?" But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see next season uh, how the what the boys do and and where they go, and and to see how this. I'm you know, <laughs> to see how this season plays out. We're getting we're getting close. We're not quite halfway. Well, I guess we are halfway through with that. Uh, yeah, or almost. Yeah, we got three more. Three more episodes. Yeah, we got right. three more. We're almost there. Just like uh, with Miss Marvel, as we're counting down to, mm-hmm. it's just six episodes of that. Yeah, I just Eight watched that. Boys. I just watched that third episode just a little while ago before before getting yep. on to recording. That was a great episode. And, what a uh, charming show that is. Uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's made me miss the teenage girl in me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. It's a good, it's a good palate cleanser for the boys. Cause like yeah. I watched both, I watched, mo- I watched part of episode four and then I watched episode five again earlier today. And I was just like, okay, I need something as a palate cleanser. Oh, let me go and, and throw on Miss Marvel. Cause I haven't watched it yet this week. And, uh, yeah, so. no, it's, it's really, it's really nice. I mean, I, I've been very surprised. Uh, I mean, I started reading, the comic books um and the only thing that i would say that's kind of different is just the origin of where she's getting her powers other than that it's like i said the the i think the cast is phenomenal on that it's just very like i said very charming uh show that i think you know it's it's a feel-good show i think and which is something that we probably need nowadays yeah yeah. absolutely and it's a fun show yeah i i do enjoy it and i'm uh, i'm curious to what we get at the end, you know, yeah. at the very end of the season, maybe a cameo by somebody, because as we all know, 
it's going to be called the Marvels for Miss Marvel 2, I believe. Right. And you're going to have Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and whatever Monica Rambeau's character will be called. <laughs> right, right. And <laughs> yeah, they'll probably point. do the same thing they did with Obi-Wan towards the very last episode in the very last minute. <laughs> yes. You get that cameo of somebody, so. Yeah. And to show some love to our podcast friends out there, too, uh, House Podcastica actually is covering Obi-Wan. So if you guys out there are interested, go to the Podcastica network and check out that for House Podcastica for all the Obi-Wan coverage that they're doing. Uh, they're having a great time. The last episode was pretty cool. I thought it was uh, fun to hear for somebody actually who was in the prequel trilogy and they were in the clone wars as a jedi mm. so they had oh, an really? interview with somebody on that who was there i don't know how they got that or who who knew that person i think it was rich or somebody that knew them and they were able to get them on so oh. they they talked about their experience and nice and filming those prequels and being a jedi yeah oh, I, that's absolutely I great need to check out obi-wan it just it slipped through the cracks for me i've got to go ahead and probably binge it now that it's done but Oh, that's right. You've been on vacation, so you I haven't was, been able to. <laughs> I, yeah, I had that three week. I had that long vacation where I just didn't. I didn't watch anything really for like three and a half weeks. So yeah, you you're all over the place. You you were seeing nature and having yeah. fun with the family. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, that's all. I lost my train of thought. I, there was something I was going to go talk about, and I just completely lost it. So. <laughs> Well, well, also to send out a little bit more love. Oh, that's for, what it was. Uh, a little bit of love for TV Podcast Industries because yeah. I, I don't know if you if you and I both forgot or you just forgot to mention that that male agent from the Department of Damage Control, that's Correct. the agent who arrests Peter Parker in No Way Home. Awesome. That's the, yes. th they said that on their on their podcast and I went back and looked it up and went, "Oh yeah, that's the the same guy." So, we have that actual official tie-in to, you were mentioning the woman agent has a tie-in also, but mm -hmm. uh, but she but he was the one that arrested uh, Peter Parker. So that Amazing. is correct, yeah. And also too with uh, Miss Marvel to talk about that. Remember the uh, the shoe thief at the the mosque? Mm -hmm. That was the kid that was dangling off the top of the mosque. Oh, that was just was the kid really? that said just the, the kid that talked about the shoe thief was the same kid. He, I don't think he's the actual thief because they talk about it. Some They've more. confirmed that on an interview recently. Oh, okay. I didn't, I hadn't heard that part of it. Yeah. Cause today they, th this, this week's episode talked about the shoe thief as well. So, yeah. So I, I'm thinking they were like, Oh, okay. So spoilers for those people, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. Uh, all right. To show a little bit more love to our uh, podcast friends, uh, Rima and Paik on strange indeed covering stranger things. Uh, Rima can't hold back. She wants to go binge watch the rest of it, but she she has to do it episodically like we do. Yep. So, uh, and talking about podcasting on, I'm pretty sure, uh, like Jason and everybody else in podcasting, but podcasting are going to do it. Umbrella Academy has dropped, so they dropped the whole season on us on Netflix. Right. I'm refraining a little bit. I'm probably going to watch it uh, with me, my memory, and how I can't really remember too much. I'll probably watch it, but we're going to start our coverage probably within the next two weeks. Yeah. We're going to do a few more, and then we'll do that. And we had talked about, and I know, I think another another one of the uh, podcasts, whether it's Strange Indeed or House Podcast, I think it's Strange Indeed. They're actually going to do it as a spoiler full podcast to where they are going to go week to week but they're gonna they're gonna binge it or they're gonna they're not gonna gonna give any kind of uh they're not gonna do like what they're doing now with stranger things where they're not watching ahead from what i understand i saw their post that they're gonna go ahead and they may go ahead and just watch ahead and then have a spoiler full podcast i think so i hope i'm not speaking at oh. a turn on that but i thought i read that on their uh their strange okay. ID facebook page so yeah, I'm curious to how many of us will be covering it. I know that we did it one, the one year we did it for last season. Mm -hmm. It was us, Strange Indeed, and TV Podcast Industries. And I think and who TV, else was it? I think TV Podcast Industries is doing it also. Uh, Strange Indeed. Uh, I'm sure there's other podcasts. There's plenty of other. I don't know if there's any on our networks that are doing it. Doing no, it. Uh, we're the time. only ones at yeah. this point. Yeah, we're the only comic people. <laughs> on Next Level Online Radio Podcast Network, so <laughs> I think I think uh, 
Ben likes it that way. But then again, he, Ben's always welcome to come in and jump in the pool. He did, yep. you know, he did DC uh, uh, primetime. Yep. DC, yeah. What was it called? DC primetime. You got it. Oh, okay. I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which everybody could go back and listen to because that was all the uh, CW stuff. Yep. But, uh, all right. So I, I think we talked a lot about this particular episode. The only thing, uh, oh, these two episodes. The one thing I would highly recommend to you out there, if there are any of you are fans that love our artwork for the po- podcast itself, uh, the stuff that Podcastica actually does for their artwork, uh, which the artist is Kirk Manley. He did uh, the artwork for Panels to Pixels podcast, as well as Adrenaline Cinema podcast now. So I have him on both of my podcasts, the artwork. So you can check that out. But uh, in Astoria Queens... Starting this Saturday, which would be the 25th of June, all the way until January 1st, 2023, they're going to have at the Museum of uh, the Moving Image, they're going to have a whole Walking Dead retrospective about how it influenced us over the past 12 years. Uh, The Saturday which will be the 25th. You're probably not going to get it until too late. I'm not sure if he's going to make another appearance again after that. But since uh, Kirk's art is going to be on display because he did all of the Walker Stalkers and he was so influential within The Walking Dead itself uh, during all the promotion and media, he has provided a dedicated poster for that this particular uh, Living with the Walking Dead exhibit that's going to be at the Museum of Moving Image in Astoria, Queens. So it's 20 bucks to get in for adults. Uh, you have to schedule it. And uh, it's a pretty long walk through. I think it's a good hour. And they will have uh, a shop there, too, where you could buy his poster. This, sun- this Saturday, like when I'm going on the 25th, he'll be there to sign. I'm just there to show some support to uh, to Kirk while he's there. And uh, I'll be wearing my Pounds the Pixel shirt as well. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. So uh, check that out if you can. Throw some support to Kirk Manley too. But his information will be in the podcast notes as always. All right. So, uh, well, let's move on to, well, where can other people hear us? Steve? Well, I'm obviously right here on Panels to Pixels, uh, and also I send voicemails out to various uh, podcasts that our friends do. We've mentioned some of them here, Strange Indeed, TV Podcast Industries, uh, what uh, WTF is from, uh, also <laughs> on Podcasting Network. Uh, so I, you might hear my voice pop up on one of those podcasts someday. Rob? And you can hear me on you know Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Uh, so we are actually, uh, we just finished covering um, Fantastic Four. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Ooh which one? <laughs> the uh, the last one that came out with a. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it, that was uh, interesting. Uh, we torture ourselves. Because <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. We torture ourselves to watch these movies that the way they were so overhyped. And so we just feel like, hey, we, we got to talk about them. And you know what? Play a little bit of a. Uh, a filmmaker and you know and do our own fantasy picks on who will we pick you know uh to play the parts or you know who directs it and things like that so we have a lot of fun with that so nice. yeah you could uh hear us on all the uh podcast uh podcasting uh, uh apps out there so cool and as always you could hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast on the parkour entertainment network there you could actually hear or, or see, actually on the website, on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network.com site, you could actually see Fantasy Picks, Movie Edition, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, Run For Your Lives, and Watched It in the 80s. With uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, you guys all know, we talk about fantasy action, thriller, suspense, all those films, anything that gets your adrenaline running. I just finished recording this past week, Contact, with our friend Lizzie for aim from the head and uh you know we have fun with that it was a 
Not only the movie was two and a half hours, I, the podcast was two and a half hours too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as always, you can always check me out on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, coming up, eventually, we'll be doing The Angry Red Planet. Steve and I will be doing Predator. After that, we'll be doing the sequel that's coming out to Hulu soon, which is called Prey. Uh, I have a lot of other films that will be in the uh, mix to be covering with a bunch of variety of different people. So uh, you can check me out on any podcast player of choice, as always. So uh, And there you could actually send feedback if you like. And to get to feedback, Steve... Can you start to tell us how they could submit their feedback? Sure. If you would like to, obviously, as Mark just said, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice. If there's a chance to give us a review on there, we would love for you to, to give us a review. We'll give you a shout out here on the, on the podcast. We also have a website, panels, two pixels podcast.com. We have a Facebook group, which is just facebook.com slash panels, two pixels. We are on Twitter at panels, the number two and pixels. So that's at panels, the number two. And pixels. Also, we are we have an email address which is panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. And then we are on YouTube as panels two pixels podcast. Don't confuse us with just panels two pixels. We are panels two pixels podcast. You can go on there, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, do whatever you want, interact with us there. <laughs> we'll get a message. Also, we're on Instagram at panels, two pixels podcast, all spelled out. So those are all the various ways you can get a hold of us. And we would love to hear from any of our marvelous listeners. <laughs> exactly. And you can check out <laughs> all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. Uh, we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm with Ben Beck, uh, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. Just go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them all out there. There'll be links there for you to follow. And coming up, well, next episode definitely will be The Boys, and we'll be covering hmm. it, and it's entitled Herogasm. Oh, I can't wait. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and following that, of, of course, Miss Marvel. So, uh, uh, well, that was a, a fun bit. I love having this where it's like the three of us, but, you know, we were just spitballing everything. I uh, had <laughs> a good time. It was fun. Yeah. So yeah. uh, I just want to thank uh, Rob for being on. Thank you, Rob. Oh, well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank fun. everybody for listening. I am Mark. I'm Steve. And I am Rob. And this was Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Star Spangle Banger signing off. <laughs> <laughs>